Yes, give me a second. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, good uh, morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is the one and only Arbitration Kitchen, and we are filming our next episode. Today, we are traveling to Finland virtually, but um, this is an interesting journey. And our guest speaker today and cook is Santu. Torunen, the Secretary General of the Finnish Arbitration Institute. Well, Santu is a, a well-established uh, legal mind and legal practitioner in Finland, and he is the author of books such as The Due Process in International Commercial Arbitration, published by Oxford. He has experience in teaching in Helsinki University, and he's behind the MUTI movement in Finland. He has coached many Finnish students and teams um, taking part in the Bilimvis competition. As of June 1st, 2019, Santu is the sec Secretary General of the Finnish Arbitration Institute. And today is exactly the anniversary of uh, 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 Santu being in office uh, with the Finnish Arbitration Institute. Congratulations, uh, Santu, with that. Uh, happy to, to see you, happy to, to hear you, happy to see you safe and, and healthy. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm, I'm really happy to, to join your series of, of Arbitration Kitchen. I, I, I really love the idea. I think it's, it's something completely new and something very innovative. And I think that this is uh, exactly what we should do in, in, in these difficult times. And, and so I want to thank you and, 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 and the whole asso association and, and Galina for, for the invitation to the, to the, to the Arbitration Kitchen. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, introducing you and not saying a, a couple of good words about other person who is um, not visible, but hopefully she is with us, Galina Zhukova. She is a very active a member of the international arbitration community, and she is a member of the board of the Finnish Arbitration Institute, and she is very much involved with the Russian Arbitration Association. So thank you, Galina, also for for making this possible. So Santo, what what, what are we cooking today? Today uh, we are cooking sorted reindeer, so uh, it is a very uh, typical, classic, I would say, uh, Finnish dish. Uh, I understand it's it's uh, maybe partly a bit challenging for people uh, in other countries. I mean, reindeer is not available everywhere, but you can easily substitute the reindeer uh, with any venison or, or or deer or or elk or any game or basically any any meat if it if it comes to that it will not be the same of course but for for reindeer uh, i of course hope that many of you would come to finland and try it here so in the in the original uh setting thank you very much for this kind invitation um, i'm now going to show our viewers the um the ingredients and perhaps this is how it should li uh, look like uh, do you see it on your screen so I understand it's mashed potatoes and meat and uh, and berries. Uh, do, do you see the presentation? Do you see the slide? Yes. 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 Okay. Let, let's just briefly um, uh, brief our participants and the viewers in the future. What what do we need for the dish? So basically, uh, it's going to be sorted reindeer. So the reindeer is the key element, of course, uh, in the thing, and 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 uh, thus we have. Uh, reindeer, I mean the roast, uh, reindeer roast. Uh, and then uh, with the reindeer, it's, it's very simple to cook. We're, we're basically just uh, uh, frying it in, in, in butter. Uh, so you need butter and then we add some salt. If you wish, you can add some uh, black pepper, but that's, that's according to one's taste. I won't use any black pepper. Uh, then we have some beer. Uh, to, to add once we have uh, fried the, the reindeer. And then uh, with the sorted reindeer, uh, we will have mashed potatoes, which is the only thing that you can have with sorted reindeer. It's, it, they go together, absolutely. So, uh, so we're going to have uh, 
potatoes, which we are cook, uh, we're going to cook. Uh, just for information for everybody, I have already peeled the potatoes. Uh, uh, you need very floury kind of potatoes. I'm going to use uh, this very specific Finnish uh, type of potatoes called Latin puikula. It's, it's from Lapland and it's, it's growing in the, in the relatively cold and, and uh, summer with, with lots of light and, and, and it's, a, it's a protected uh, 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 sort of, of potatoes uh, as a, as a, as a, as a uh, brand of origin. So, uh, so we're going to have the potatoes. Uh, we cook them with a bit of salt uh, and then uh, once they are cooked, uh, we add a bit of the cooking water of the pot potatoes and, and then some cream and then some butter and we mash the potatoes. So, so it's going to be mashed potatoes, very easy as well, uh, simple uh, and complicated. And then uh, finally, when all that is done, uh, we're going to have uh, lingonberries, mashed lingonberries. I just took them out of the freezer. Uh, so. Uh, we're going to, to mash the Lincoln berries and, and add it uh, to the uh, salted reindeer and the mashed potatoes, as, as, as everybody saw in the, in the picture in the very beginning. So uh, I would just like to underline that if you don't have Lincoln berries, uh, you can just as well use uh, cranberries. I think they are maybe easier to, to, to find all over. Uh, and uh, basically, what if, this is it. Yeah. What if people? Like uh, any substitute for the meat uh, for the vegetarians, do you think that would be possible? That would be very difficult, but in, 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 in uh, well, I don't know, of course, everything is possible, but I, I, I cannot really imagine what, what you would substitute it with, but, but you can use your imagination. I mean, I mean, many of you are counsel and, and, and you know how to, how to deal with difficult and surprising situations, so I, I am sure that people will, will find uh, a solution even in, in those cases. Uh, however, uh, there, um, I, I have a friend who is, who is, uh, who is a vegetarian, but uh, she's uh, always making an uh, exception with reindeer because uh, her theory is that uh, since reindeer, according to her, aren't the smartest kind of animal, so, uh, so they, they are uh, comparable to vegetables. But, but this is, of course, uh, ethically unsustainable logic as such. But what is, uh, what is also good for, uh, for to be serious, uh, for, for, uh, uh, for people that are vegetarians based on, on, on ethical reasons, uh, reindeer is ethically quite sustainable uh, as an ingredient because uh, it's not uh, mass produced in the sense uh, of, of, of many other meat and, 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 and the, the animal have a, have a good life uh, in, in free uh, before they are then used. And, and of course, uh, also one could say that uh, eating reindeer is, is, is uh, also partly maybe conserving the original uh, lifestyle of the Sami people in the north. It's, it's the indigenous uh, group of people in, living in Finland and, and, and in Lapland, in, in, in Sweden and Norway as well, and, 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 and there. Uh, key element of their form of life has always been taking care of reindeer. So uh, uh, the reindeer have been used very carefully, uh, not just the meat and the, and the, and the, and the skin, but also, uh, also the bone has been uh, used for handcraft, traditional handcraft. And, and, and uh, so uh, one could say that, that in this sense, uh, if, if one is not eating meat for eth ethical reasons, uh, reindeer is a, is a good compromise. Uh, it's, it's closer to something that could be ethically acceptable uh, even to, to vegetarians. Okay, so it seems to be a Nordic Finnish. Well, it comes from the north of Finland dish, uh, Sami people, which is the indigenous population of Finland. And I imagine, imagine that we will see that the way you cook it also resembles the way of uh, life in the northern Finland. Um, what, what should we start with? So I see this you know, piece of uh, roast at yeah. you. So uh, just to, to, to uh, let everybody know uh, the, the, the plan, so to say, we are starting with the, with the reindeer. We are, we, are, we are going to cut it into, into small chips and, uh, and uh, 
then we're going to fry the reindeer. And, and when we've done that, we'll leave the reindeer to simmer and, and then uh, go with the cook the potatoes. Then maybe we are going to have to chat a bit while we're waiting for the potatoes to cook. And, uh, and once the potatoes have been cooked, we will, we will mash them and, and, and then uh, move on to, 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 to the uh, lingonberry. So that is the plan. And we start with the reindeer now. So the, the idea is that uh, with reindeer, uh, it's, it's supposed to be that the meat is supposed to be frozen, but melted a bit so that uh, once the meat is frozen, you can make small chips out of it, like, uh, like uh, with the knife. Uh, if it's if it's completely frozen it's very difficult it's hard to cut but if it's completely melted you cannot make uh, chips out of the uh out of the or small thin slices out of the meat as you can you could you can do when it's 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 frozen so uh so that is the that is the logic of of having half frozen meat to to to, to prepare this dish and I'm, of course, uh, using a traditional tool, a Finnish puukko, which is also a very traditional Finnish object uh, that uh, everybody is, is using. And also one of the traditional uh, Lapish uh, or, or Sami objects of, of hand, handcraft. Uh, uh, and, uh, and thus also uh, the right tool to, to, to uh, prepare reindeer or salted reindeer with. Okay, um, uh, this uh, uh, the ingredients. This is uh, um, what is it? Five hundred grams of reindeer, or yeah. how much was it? Five hundred, right? Would it be sufficient for uh, four dishes to to have four guests uh, around the table, or is for two persons? What do you think? How was the portion? Well, it depends on how much you eat. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say I would say it's a bit little for four people. So maybe for two, three people, I would say. Uh, but it depends on if you have something else also, or if you have a spike or, or so. So it's, it's, it, it always depends on that, but, uh, but it's, it's not going to be all that much in the end, so. Okay. So. For, for, for the ease of reference for our guests, and I see that we have people joining, um, joining our show tonight. Oh, uh, if, you, if you click on the chat room button at the bottom of your screen, you will see a step-by-step uh, preparation cooking process just to make your your cooking easier if you're cooking with us today or perhaps you will decide to to cook it later on with your family not not today but sometimes in the future also this video will appear on the official russian arbitration association youtube channel it's easy to find just google uh, arbitration kitchen you will see the video, you will see the tutorials be, be below the video in the commentary section. So a uh, step-by-step -step cooking process. But back to you, uh, Santo. Um, um, so you're, you're making those thin slices. Is the meat hard yeah. or it's some, some little bit melted meat? It's a, it's a little bit melted. I can, I can yeah. show it to you. So it's quite easy to, to, to cut actually. I, I, I think uh, it's it's more or less 500 grams, and I, I, I took it out of the freezer like uh, I think uh, what would I say five hours ago, and and, and, and put it into fridge, so it has uh, it has uh, melted a bit, but it's still uh, you can you can see that it's it's still uh, still sort of frozen uh, a bit, and and you can feel it's very very cold still, so. Uh, so but uh, and it could be even a bit colder so I, I would say that even even four hours would probably be be enough uh time for uh, for, for preparation and of course you can speed up the, the melting process if you if you take it out of the fridge okay and i very see that yeah yeah sorry i see very that simple. you are yeah it's very simple and uh, i see that you're not even trying to make it make them even it just the, as it goes, so the, the the way you fill the meat and you just slice it in the most appropriate, in your opinion, ways. It doesn't have to be even um, a pile of even pieces, slices. Is that correct? Yes, I mean uh, this is a, this is an exact uh, this is a this is an excellent time for us lawyers to be creative. So okay, very good. Well, tell me a little bit about um, about the portrait on your on your table. I see that um, you have uh, yellow 
bowls and plates and everything? Is it something special? Is it, uh, um, what, what is it? No, well, uh, it's like uh, all the, uh, the plates that we will be using today in all the, all the kitchen uh, equipment, they are basically uh, very classic uh, Finnish uh, design objects. So uh, even the even the, the pot that we're using is 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 uh, is one. I mean that is uh, that the pot is is designed by Timo Sarapaneva, one of the most classic Finnish designers, and it's actually included in the collection of of, of the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Uh, and and of course, I mean thinking of Finland, uh, we don't have that. I mean. Uh, let's say design and, and modern architecture is actually uh, the cultural contribution, I would say, of, of, of Finland to the world. And, and, uh, and these are, I, I know that uh, to, to, to many, these don't look that uh, special or fancy as, as, as some, for example, uh, Italian or Danish design objects, but uh, they are very uh, well formed. I mean, these, uh, Basically everything here is designed in the 50s and 60s, and and they uh, they survive the time extremely well. So uh, so many of the people that, uh, for example, move out of home and and go to study in another city and get get their own apartments, they go and buy the same kind of dishes, the same kind of plates, the same kind of uh, kitchen equipment as their parents have bought when they actually move to their own apartment. And, and, and that, that also means that it's very easy to combine. And it's, it's very much form follows function with finished design. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, they are also very affordable in the sense that uh, finished design is, 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 is meant for everybody. And, and I think that uh, I also wanted to do this uh, for the reason that I think that uh, this is something that we also have to think uh, about in arbitration. I mean, uh, we have to be, uh, we have to think about uh, doing what is necessary and, and, and keeping the costs down and, 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 and uh, offering a service uh, for, for people and for companies that, 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 that uh, will respond to these basic needs. Okay, so it's uh, reliable, simple, very functional, easy to substitute and easy to, to um, combine different dishes with one another. It might be different colors, but still the same functional and very um, uh, functional form, a very simple design. Uh, to, it's probably very durable, so you can just pass it from generation to generation. So how are we doing with the, uh, with the reindeer? How's it coming along? You're getting done. hungry? Uh, yeah, I am, yes. <laughs> so uh, the reindeer is, is basically cut now. So this is how it looks. Uh, can you see it, Omar? Yes, yes, very well, yes. Wonderful. It doesn't okay. look that bad, does it? Not to me, at least. Um, and I hope to our viewers as well. So what's Wonderful. the next step? The next step is that uh, we uh, open the, uh, the pot. And, oh, that's uh, that's very handy. So you can use the the handle to also open the lid. Yeah, and no, handle it's easy the pot. It's, it's it's not yes. hot, so uh, so you can even touch it. But once it's hot, this is this is very uh, very practical. So you don't need any, yes. any extra extra tools or extra fabrics for that. Yes, and the handle is some special form. What it what that? Yeah, what it's, is it's, it? Uh, well, of course. I mean. At times, uh, with design objects, you you also uh, uh, develop stories that fit the objects. But basically, uh, it has been said that this imitates the function of, of this very classic Finnish tool, which is used to uh, carry water from the from from the well uh, with two uh, two uh, cans and 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 and, and uh, behind the, the neck on the shoulder. So so it it imitates the form of that and. And then uh, you also use it to 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 carry the the, the pot. So uh, okay. in this sense, uh, one can say that there are references to to these yes. very basic uh, tools right. that, that everybody has been using. J just a, a question. So this red pot, the uh, uh, designers made made red pot in a normal kitchen. Would it be like an iron pot, a heavy iron pot would be sufficient for this dish? Would it suffice or something? Yeah. Yes. yes, okay. Yes, yes. sorry. I mean, any 
I, I would use if you, most of the people have some sort of cast iron pot uh, at yeah. home. So, so that would be excellent. That would be okay. excellent. All right. Okay. Just walk us through. So what's next? So, butter. butter. How much? In the, in the pot. It's, uh, it's uh, well, it's, it's uh, three teaspoons. I think I put in the, in the, in the recipe in the, in the, in the bottom of, uh, of the, of the pot, but I would, I would prefer just to say that uh, quite much would be good, you know, <laughs> to really stir the, uh, the meat and, and, and brown the meat. So, so what is essential here is that uh, you actually uh, really uh, uh, brown the meat and not just boil it, you know, we don't want any brown uh, mash, we want really uh, I mean, any 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 gray mash. I mean, we want really uh, brown uh, brown meat. So uh, so with quite high heat and and lots of butter, you you get the best result. And and you also add the meat in little portions, not everything at once, but uh, a little bit at the time. So okay, so you want to make it a little bit crispy, not just absolutely boiled. Okay, not boiled. Right. So and then a uh, butter goes. You melt. You melt butter in the pots. Um, what's the what's the fire? What's the was it low low slow fire or? No, it's the maximum fire. Maximum. At the moment, okay. So, yeah. so you just melt butter. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to keep you waiting. <laughs> well, to be honest, I I'm turning professional here because I've uh, had some some quick food before before this uh, episode. Um, you know, to focus on the conversation rather than on food. So, uh, but perhaps I'll have a chance to, to try it in the future. Look, okay, so, so the butter is uh, melting. I see it's some melting. steam it's, coming out. Yeah, it's uh, boiling nicely. Do you, are you ready for adding the meat? Yes, please, go for it. Wonderful. So uh, in, in, in small portions. Okay, so you gradually add meat in small portions to, um, yeah, and you steer it a little bit. Yes, okay. All right. Um, speaking about Finland, uh, I have some questions for you um, about Finland and Finnish life. I've prepared myself for this for this episode and actually went through some uh, rankings, country country ratings, country index, etc. And Finland seems to be quite high in uh, many positions, including health and skills and education. And I'm just showing this slide. Um, it represents various um, areas of the uh, human activities and uh, economy and education, etc. And uh, what I can tell from this is that uh, Finland always strikes over average, so it's in the higher position in terms of the competitiveness. Well, I see that uh, in, in your slide, Finland is ranked 11th uh, in, in, in 140, so I wouldn't say that it's over average. I think it's quite well, actually. It's quite well. It's very well. And um, it's also a good company. You see uh, New Zealand, Singapore, South Korea, the United States, China, um, um, Germany, etc. Okay, but if you go further than that, and uh, I made this slide just to, you know, to underline some of the uh, the highest positions Finland takes in terms of um, the country index, and uh, it's number one in the organized crime. I mean, uh, absence of organized crime. <laughs> Sounds really bad when you put it that way. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, there is virtually no organized crime. Uh, as far as I see, Finland strike, uh, strikes um, you know, the first position. The reliability of police services, judicial independence, all these are number one in the world. Efficiency of legal framework in challenging regulations. Um, e-participation index, meaning that people are very much involved in the electronic uh, services, the protection of property rights, intellectual property protection, strength of auditing and reporting standards, which makes it quite well for, for doing business, I, 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 I can imagine. Um, 
Um, and it brings me to the next uh, and very interesting observation, which I, uh, I, I was surprised to learn that Finland is ranking number one in terms of uh, the happiest people in the world. <laughs> And this is very interesting. Finland, Denmark, Switzerland, Iceland, Norway, Netherlands, Sweden. By the way, most of the um, top five countries are the northern belt of Europe, which is interesting. So um, what's what's the reason behind that? Why people, why Finnish people are so happy? What makes them happy? What makes them to enjoy life, in your opinion? Well, I think that uh, at least uh, we can exclude uh, the, 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 the wonderful sunshine uh, in the winter, which is uh, not that uh, much existing. Okay, we are compensated in the summer when everything comes alive and, and, uh, and uh, we have the nightless night and, and uh, lots of light. So, so that compensates a bit, but, but the winter is, 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 is a bit dark at times. Yeah. And, uh, but I think that it, it probably is related to the uh, factors that you mentioned in the previous slides. Uh, the uh, the uh, uh, sort of general stability and, and, and trust in the, in the society. And of course, Finland is a traditional Nordic welfare society. So in, in that sense, uh, I think that these uh, these factors partly explain it, but but maybe it also has something to do with uh, with us always being quite close to nature. So Finland is a relatively big country, but we are only six million people here. So uh, so it means that uh, we have lots of space. Uh, there's a lot of forest. There are lots of lakes. Uh, the nature is very much close to us and always around us. And maybe that is one thing that sort of. Uh, gives a lot to people and maybe that helps people to actually also be be happy then in the end okay look um yes so you continue adding meat so gradually putting it in portions to to the pots um so how, how does it look can we see it oh it's steaming okay well let's just see, give it a minute in, in about two minutes okay fine yeah, that, that is absolutely fine. And while we are waiting, uh, I have a, a, a quiz for you about Finland. I googled it and it's interesting. Uh, some facts about Finland. Well, first fact is um, Finland has 187,000 lakes. That's, that's a lot. Um, uh, an average Finn consumes 12 kilos of coffee each year. In it's your probably... impression? Yeah. It probably is explained by the fact that not everybody is drinking coffee. <laughs> okay, so you you would you would uh, second that that Finns consume a lot of coffee. F Finns have the be the biggest ice cream consumption consumption <laughs> um, uh, per capita. So Finns eat more ice cream than an average person in the world, which is interesting. <laughs> yes. So what are we having? Okay, meat. Can you see? Yes, we, we, I see the chips, They're cr kind of crispy. Yeah, good. Good. So, Very good. Uh, so we're so, there. May I so, interrupt you? No, yeah, so what do you do with the meat? You just keep it on yeah. the slow fire or what? No, I, no, no it's, 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 it's basically uh, fried. It actually, I have to say, it kind of looks good. Uh, it's, it's of, course, of course, I have to say that the concept is not the least stressful way of, of, of cooking, but I'm happy that this actually looks very good now. So, so what we do is that we can add a bit of salt uh, at this point already, and maybe uh, mix it a bit, and then we add a bit of beer. So. Uh, just uh, maybe one deciliter or so, so that you don't get too fluidy in, in the end. Uh, and there'll be a, a lager or stout or any type of beer you, you feel any like. Any type putting. of beer. You can also use dark beer if you want. It's, it's, it's going to taste a bit different, but that's just, just good. I mean, you can be a bit creative with this. So now we have the, the meat uh, and, and the beer, and now we can leave it to simmer. So we, we uh, Turn down the, 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 the uh, fire and uh, leave it leave it to zimmer. So so basically, the reindeer part is 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 practically done now. 
Right. Good. Very good. So uh, just a, a few more questions to you. Um, freedom to roam and the right access to uh, uh, the right to public access. So you mentioned that Finns are very close to nature and uh, that's a part of your life. You probably have, I don't know, morning or evening walks, etc. So uh, virtually you can access any land across Finland. There's no trespassing, nothing. So you, everyone is allowed to enter any land. Is that is that true? Yeah, that's yeah. that's true. That's that's a very Finnish uh, invention in the sense of very uh, very democratic invention, I would say. We call it every man's right. Uh, so so you can you can go to the forest. You can you can camp in the forest. You can pick the berries. Uh, you can you can pick the mushrooms. Uh, you cannot uh, harm the forest. You cannot cut trees. Uh, you you have to behave. But you, you, you can uh, be in the forest. So uh, okay, so I understand that uh, most of the uh, most of the ingredients, not well, except potatoes and butter, perhaps come from the wild nature. So we'll speak about berries today, I guess, and you'll describe where you pick them, uh, reindeer, etc. So it's a part of the uh, of the human well 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 being here to to go um, to go to the forest and um, and. Um, you know, stroll around, pick berries, etc. in Finland. Okay, so um, is that true that Finns have more saunas than cars? I think that might be true. Uh, I mean, Finns do like their cars as well, but uh, but uh, there are plenty of saunas. And, and, and for example, if I think about our families or my family's summer house, I think we have three saunas uh, at the summer house. I mean, one next to the house uh, heated with wood and, and one uh, in the house heated with electricity and then one uh, next to the to the to the lake uh, heated with wood and 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 uh, and uh, that's a very difficult thing for things to do and and also uh, I mean, even if in the in the in the uh, capital or in big cities uh, when when new uh, apartment buildings are built uh, it's very difficult to sell even a small 25 square meter studio apartment uh, if it does not have a sauna in it. So, uh, so this is a, it's a very finished thing to, to, to always have a sauna. So, uh, so I think uh, your facts might just be right. <laughs> okay, well, these are uh, with a lot of assistance of uh, Google. It also tells me that uh, there are highest and the most expensive uh, speeding tickets in Finland and uh, the legend goes that the the most expensive expensive uh, speeding ticket was for a hundred thousand euros how is that possible well uh, the the speeding tickets are, are uh, uh, ordered based on the uh, income level of, 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 a, of a person so uh, so you're you're uh, you're, you're getting a daily fine or basically a, a fine based on your daily income. And then that is multiplied uh, depending on the seriousness of your, your uh, uh, speeding or, or any other, other crime that is, is punished with this sort of, of system. So, so if, if your income level is high, then, then your fines are, are, are high as well. So that's, okay. that, that's the system. But, but of course, that's quite draconic, I would say, uh, to, to, to have that sort of, sort of uh, punishments uh, for, for speeding. But, uh, but the idea is that uh, if you, if you uh, earn a lot and, and, and get a small fine, it would not uh, mean anything to you in the end. So, so that's okay. maybe the ratio behind the system. But it's, uh, of course, it sounds terrible when you put it that way. So uh, I, I, I think that nobody should really be that afraid of driving in Finland. So it's not quite easy to get that, that kind of a kind of a ticket and I, I really hope it was not yours Roman, the, uh, the, the, the record one. Uh, no, it wasn't for sure, for sure. Um, so uh, how, about the red pots and meat in it. So what's going on there? Could you just give us a, yeah. a brief instruction what to do next? Yeah, I, I, I can show you what's going on in here. There is not much going on, I would say, just uh, simmering there. Yes. Maybe you, maybe you see a bit. Uh, let's let's put that uh, back on, 
and uh, let's start cooking the potatoes. So uh, I already have water in the in the in the, in the pot. So uh, so and I hope that everybody has the peeled potatoes. If not, uh, now it's the time to start, <laughs> and you're already in a hurry. But uh, but we I just. Uh, actually forgot to, to turn the water on, so this will take a second. To... Yes, that's fine. Then I have a few more things for you. Well, first of all, there is a question in the chat room asking what goes well with, what, what kind of drink goes well with this dish? What would you any like? drink? I mean, uh, you can go with beer or wine or, or, or any, any, any drink you, you wish to choose. So. Right. And I assume when you, when you add beer, it's not about alcohol, but it's about the taste. So people can use alcohol-free beer as well. Of course, beer. of course, it's... of course, alcohol-free beers. Is, there won't be any alcohol left anyway once you once you cook it for for a certain time on the on the stove. So alcohol alcohol will be gone, but uh, but it's just uh, for the flavor and and also uh, to uh, not uh, have all too dry uh, end product because uh, also I mean uh, you add butter and or 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 fat or fat. Uh, but uh, still, reindeer meat is very dry. It's it's very it's not very greasy. So uh, so so in that sense, it's it's good to have some moisture. In it. Okay, while while we are racing against boiling water, let's speak about a, a little bit about traditional or not so traditional Finnish sports, but perhaps those sports which make people happy and making them enjoy life. Um, I browsed through um, through the internet and identified three in my opinion, interesting sports. And one of these is di being displayed now. It's called a wife carrying competition. And it, it turned to be an international phenomenon. I know that there are wife carrying, comp uh, the associations of, of carrying wife uh, sports, etc., across the globe. So it's, it's becoming good fun. <laughs> uh, is it a traditional Finnish sport or is it something new? It's, it's very much something new, I would say. I mean, uh... Uh, I think that the traditional Finnish sports would be uh, either ice hockey or, or even, let's say, javelin or, or running, or, and, and then, of course, motorsports, which, which is very uh, much of a Finnish thing. Okay. So, so I would say that this is a new invention. Uh, right. Yeah, and I'm happy to see a fellow Russian actually uh, taking the lead in this competition, which is good. Uh, uh, By the way, Roman, may I yes. interrupt you shortly yes. here? Yes, so, the boy. Uh, the water is very much boiling. We add a bit of salt in the in the cooking water or in the boiling water, and then we add the the, the potatoes. They Kill are kind potatoes. of uh, uh, smallish uh, mm. peeled potatoes uh, and very flowery. Remember, flowery kind of uh, potatoes. Okay. So we just uh, pour them in. Yes. Okay. You don't cut them in half. It will be sufficient. This size will just boil. We'll uh, they will they will boil quite very fast. quickly. They are they are okay. they are very small, so uh, so okay. So that, All right. that, that shall not, not be a problem. Sorry. Yes. Oh, by the way, this is a nice looking kitchen. Um, do you do you normally cook or or do well, you cook? I don't cook. I don't. I, I, I do cook, but uh, not every day. So it's not uh, like an everyday routine for me. But uh, but I, I do cook, and I, I actually like cooking when I when I get to it. So. So, uh, but I'm I'm not a professional, so uh, so you have to excuse me for for any 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 problems that we might have. No, you don't have to. But this is a very professional setup um, in terms of the uh, of the countertop, and um, it's easy to clean. and And the way your even the way your table is located, it's 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 well suited for uh, for online kitchen and everything. Which is very good. So you may just want to continue this show on your own, and you know, have this uh, Monday cooking with Santo Turunen. <laughs> All well, right. Go I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll stay in arbitration. I think <laughs> that uh, I will do better in this. <laughs> okay. Going back to the um, um, interesting Finnish sports, uh, there is another one. What is this? It looks like uh, you managed to find pictures from a mobile phone throwing competition, uh, which is of course uh, linked to 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 Finland uh, being uh, the home of, of 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 one of the or 
having been the home of one of the most important uh, mobile phone clusters in the world with, with the Nokia, uh, Nokia uh, phones uh, back in the 90s. And, uh, and I guess uh, this, is, uh, this originates from, from, from the 90s, I would say, uh, this boy. Do you know uh, the world record in throwing the phone? What's the distance? What was the long, longest throw? Oh, that's a difficult question. I, I, I don't know, but uh, well, uh, I know 50 meters. I'll give up. Uh, it'll be a surprise for you. So the record is held by, I think, a Belgium guy. And he threw a phone four years back uh, for 104 meters, which is which is longer than some people can actually run. Um, okay, so this is this is an, another interesting competition. Okay, what one more. What phone was it? I think that was Nokia, so you can use it many times. It was the most durable phone. I had one for like for a decade probably, and served quite well. Right, um, there is another one. Football. What's this? Oh, it looks like uh, the uh, swamp soccer uh, game. Uh, that is, of course, uh, also a Finnish invention. I, I, I think, I, I hope, uh, and uh, maybe, maybe the Finns invented that because uh, the Finnish national team never ever succeeded in in in, in football. So, uh, so maybe we have to find our own version where we would be actually a bit stronger. So, so I think that that's that has to be the, the origin of that sport. Not knowing at all, you you of course have googled the right answer for for, for that. But uh, I think that that might might be the, the reason. Of course, uh, the Finnish football team is actually the national football team is actually doing much better nowadays. Uh, and, and 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 we even managed to to get to the European uh, uh, Championship uh, tournament uh, for the first time. And and and. Uh, then of course, uh, unfortunately, it was cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, uh, this is the only football competition which is held constantly in Finland in one place. I mean, uh, it never travels across the globe. You know, this this World Cup only happens in Finland, which is so. Finns invented their own World Cup, um, which is interesting. Have you have you ever done this? No, never. No. I, I actually, it would be a nice thing to try. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I guess the potatoes are cooking. So we, uh, I'll just uh, have several pictures of your personal life. And I would be interested to hear how you live and your, your way of living and what you enjoy in your life. So uh, these are the pictures of um, Finnish, uh, was it archipelago, Finnish uh, Baltic Sea, I guess? Uh, uh, yes, uh, those are... Uh, I think that the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, they are all from the Baltic Sea. Uh, the upper uh, right corner is is with my my boat. Uh, I have a timeshare boat with a friend, uh, which is, by the way, a very good way to 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 own a boat because you get a, a bit less uh, trouble than you would get if you if you if you have your own boat and and, and then uh, you still have. Uh, just enough time to, to, to use it. So, so that is with, with, with our boat, uh, the, the upper, upper right corner in the, in the Finnish archipelago. It's the, the, the archipelago in the, in, 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 uh, next to the Finnish coast is absolutely amazing. It, the, the Baltic Sea and the, the archipelago, it's so beautiful. It's, it's like uh, breathtaking basically every time you go there, even if, you, even if you've been there many times and even if it's something very familiar to you. So, so it's really, I think it's one of the best things that you can do in Finland. Uh, uh, and and uh, also, uh, if you go back to the uh, previous picture still, uh, the, uh, I mean, even if you, no, not, not that far. Oh, uh, yeah, so, uh, so you can, I mean, uh, with the boats in the archipelago, you can, uh, you can, uh, I mean, you can rent the boat if you come here for a holiday, and uh, and uh, there are races. I mean, the the lower uh, left corner is from Helsinki Tallinn race, uh, mm. where you can uh, go and, and race against other sailing boats. I mean, this is with the sailing boat of a friend. So 
a very recommendable thing, I would say, in, in, in Finland. Okay. Uh, I also know the Finnish um, uh, need for speed. It's in the Finnish genes to, to have speedy driving, although the tickets, the speeding tickets are quite expensive in Finland. But, uh, and I know that lots of Finns actually enjoy racing. And there are big names in the Formula One in the, in the racing competitions from Finland. And I see that uh, from the, these pictures, I see that you are a part of the racing, uh, um, 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 how would you say it's um, DNA of Finland. So tell us about this, uh, where, 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 where this race took place. Was it a regular race for you or you did it once, we did it once, who you did it no. with, et cetera. And this, is, uh, this is just, you asked for some childhood pictures and, and I, I wanted to provide you this collage from, uh, from my from my childhood so so basically i was born in the world rally capital i would say uh which is the uh city of Jyväskylä in central finland it's the uh base of the uh thousand lakes rally which is uh, one of the most classic world rally uh, uh competitions uh existing uh, uh, along with monte carlo for example and and so and uh, uh it was of course uh a very important thing for me when when growing up i mean i i actually uh through some friends we we we, we knew some of the people that are very active in the field and, and and the upper left corner and the uh and the and the middle picture in the left is is me with uh in the upper corner the four-time world champion Juha Kankun and, and and then the the uh, lower picture is with one-time world champion Timo Salonen uh uh I mean, and, and to get these uh, experiences of sitting next to, to 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 the really the fastest guys in the in the world just to for for an experiment, it, it's it's a it's a huge experience, and I was of course very much into these things, and and then we uh, we participated the uh, Thousand Lakes Veteran Rally uh, with my father uh, with this. Uh, uh, DKW 1000 S. Uh, it's a German car from from 1961, and, and and the rest of the pictures are from that. But this is still, I mean, these are childhood pictures, and and I'm not uh, participating in, in in any racing in any any way. But I very much follow all the World Rally series and Formula One series. I mean, we have a group of friends, and we always have these Formula One studios, which is. Uh, actually a, a really great way to 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 also meet friends and and, and enjoy the races together and good and, uh, yeah good so we move on a little bit a uh, couple of more uh, uh photos of your of your life uh, one is I, I know that you are very passionate um uh, researcher and collector of modern and contemporary finnish art uh, is that is that true what, what's the That's passion true. what's behind That's that true. Okay. I, I, I mean, it's very difficult to explain what's behind it, but I, I, I just, uh, I just uh, uh, very much like uh, looking at art and 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 and, uh, and uh, uh, sort of following the, the 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 scene. I mean, I I I, I try to, to to go to the galleries and go to the museums for for exhibitions, and and also if I go abroad, I always try to find some contemporary architecture to see. Uh, in, in any of the cities where I go and, and uh, I even studied a bit of art history uh, at some point uh, that, that didn't really develop into any, any, any much, much of a career but uh, I wrote a bit about uh, law and art and, 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 and tried to combine these two, two fields a bit and, and it's, it's, it's an exciting thing and, and it gives me great joy always. Good to hear that. By the way, do you know if they're going to extend the Guggenheim Museum to Finland. Uh, there was some conversation some long time ago, but I don't know how far it moved. It'd be nice well, to have uh, Guggenheim next to Russia. Yeah, it, it, would be, it would be nice, but it's of course, uh, there are many aspects into this discussion and, and it's always a question of where to allocate the, the resources in a field where the resources are a bit scarce at times. So, uh, so, uh, so it's a difficult discussion, but at the, at the moment there will be no Okay. The following pictures represent your the, the very important part of your life, as I imagine. It's uh, university and uh, students, and of course the the mood competition. Are you still involved in uh, in the mooting, or you're busy with the institute these days? 
No, I, I, I sort of retired as a coach, but uh, I'm of course very much involved in the sense that I, I go to the pre moves. I mean, the lower left corner is is from uh, uh, from the Helsinki pre move this year, uh, and uh, of course I, I I had registered to to go to 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 this move Vienna, uh, and I I did arbitrate in the in the uh, virtual move as well. Uh, and uh, I try to to uh, to follow the, the events and go participate in the events. I mean, it's it's so much uh, positive energy around. I mean, there is so much positive energy around the move and and uh, young people learning, uh, wanting to learn about arbitration and and uh, about basically our world. So so I think it's 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 a wonderful concept and 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 it's always uh, very energizing to. To participate in it. Oh, okay, good. How are we doing with the potatoes? Are they done? Well, uh, let me see. I think we we just uh, we will still boil them for a couple of minutes. Okay. Uh, but then uh, it's really just a couple of minutes, I would say. Okay. Well, tell tell us about then um, your. Uh, this first year with the Finnish Arbitration Institute, so you um, you took over uh, the uh, uh, previous Secretary General was Heidi Mirikala Tyre. She she did a great job to 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 uh, develop and to promote the institute, and I, I guess you have um, even higher objectives to you know continue promoting and just bring it to to the next level. Tell us a little bit about the institute, and I, I'll have a few slides for you here as well. Yes, so um, uh, from from the web pages of the Finnish Arbitration Institute, it, it says that it's it's a very old uh, establishment. It was started, it was launched actually. Uh, the founding meeting was in Vasa Tradesman Association in nine, 1909, but the institute was uh, was started only in 1911, two years later. So how how is it? Is it a modern institute or it's a very traditional institute? Uh, tell us a little bit about that, please. Well, uh, of course, I, I think that the uh, the FAI is, is actually one of the oldest still function, functioning uh, arbitration institutes uh, in the world, and uh, and uh, we are of course traditional in the sense that we we try to uh, uh, to uh, live up to the to the expectations uh, that this sort of tradition and 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 well. Uh, uh, well, that this sort of tradition uh, uh, creates, but then at the same time, I mean, I would like to to think that we also have a, a bit of this sort of uh, startup spirit. I mean, uh, I mean, really trying to push. I mean, uh, there has been uh, a tendency for the Finnish arbitration to to become more and more international, and 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 um, and uh, also for the institute to grow. And I think that uh, many of the ingredients of, of the growth and and uh, and uh, let's say that the uh, are, are 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 there, and there is a lot of potential for us to grow. Uh, thinking about uh, Finland as as a location, I mean, geographically, and and also. Uh, the judicial environment and and uh, and our traditions and and our efficiency. I mean, the secretariat is 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 was very efficient when I I got there, and I I I, I like to think that it still is, uh, despite uh, me joining. And <laughs> and uh, and it's very really, humble. Uh, <laughs> we we really uh, push hard, and I think that with these uh, competitive competitive advantages that we have, uh, we actually uh, can do even, even, even better than we do at the moment. So uh, I really very much believe in, in, in our, our chances to, to grow. Right, right. Uh, but, uh, but in, in, the, in these very turbulent times, uh, does the Institute still operate as normal? You guys work remotely or you, how does it work? The Institute uh, works perfectly. I mean, no, no, no problems. I mean, uh, people are mostly working remotely, but uh, uh, our process has uh, has uh, been very much digital uh, already before before this, and and uh, 
and we have managed to to convert our our operations to to remote working quite quite well and uh, i think that we we are we are delivering the the uh, same service to the parties even though we actually have a record year uh, or let's say the record record first part of the year this year we have uh, so far 51 new applications or new cases uh, so uh, so I mean despite the uh, the, the uh, virus and the remote working we've managed to do really well with the with, with handling the cases that that do come in. That's quite a, quite interesting because I'm now um, displaying a slide with the case load, with the number of requests annually starting uh, from 2009 for the past 10 years. And uh, if you're doing 51 already, 51 requests have been filed so far. Even the first the first half is not hasn't passed yet. It's uh, certainly a, quite an exceptional quite an exceptional uh, result. Do you see Cases driven by I don't know force majeure, the COVID nineteen or something, uh, in these circumstances. That is that the reason why you have so many cases uh, in the first uh, half of two thousand twenty. No, I don't. I don't think that is the reason. I. I it's really difficult to explain uh, the the changes in the in the caseload at the at the institute. It's, it has always been and it still is. But uh, based on on uh, um, my opinion it, it's it's not because of the uh of the force majeure uh issues uh at least not yet i mean it remains to be seen i think uh uh how that will affect the caseload in the in the in the second part of the year okay Let, let's try the potatoes yeah i think the potatoes are done so how is it cooking want... yes yeah good you're worried uh, but I I, I want to. Of, I sense a bit of uh, bit of worries. Uh. Uh, I'm I'm worried for for the people who watch and cook with us, because sometimes oh. uh, you know we we are the masters of um, talks. But uh, myself is I'm not a I'm not I'm not a master of uh, cooking. So if I talk too much, I carry away and then you know totally forget about food. So I'm being um, um, conscious about uh, our viewers today. So what do we okay. have? So we have the potatoes. Uh, let me show. Yes. They are quite soft, I would say, but it doesn't really matter because we're mashing them anyway. <laughs> so, yes. uh, so I think that it's, it's, uh, it's quite good. And then we have this very special tool for, uh, for mashing the potatoes. Uh, but if you don't have uh, this at home, you can use a uh, mixer uh, stick. Or, or just a spoon or, 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 or something. So it's, it's really not that, that critical, but, but if you have one of these, uh, they are very, very useful. So uh, now we just uh, maybe mash the potatoes a bit first. Uh, sort of a start uh, for, for this. So, uh, oops. So now it, it looks, looks like this. And uh, then it's the time to add the cream. So uh, I, I, I wrote that we would add about one deciliter of, 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 uh, of cream. Uh, let's pour it in. And then uh, a little bit uh, of the cooking water of the potatoes. So. And, uh, and then uh, some butter, uh, which is the uh, key element. Otherwise, it won't taste good. So uh, I, I, I think I said 50 grams uh, of butter. That, that should be, that should be the, the appropriate amount. Uh, but it's, it's not that precise. OK. OK, and then so you mush it again. Then, then you mm. mix it, basically. Mm -hmm. OK. Any salt, pepper, any seasoning? Yeah, a bit of salt. Okay, good. Um, I've read that potato in Finnish is peruna. Would that be yeah. because it came, it came from Peru, so if it was imported from Peru for the first time in Finland, I understand it's not like a traditional, very traditional 
uh, Finnish ingredient. Uh, it probably has been for the past, I don't know, 250 years, but. Well, that would make sense. Uh, it's, it's the, it could make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I what, what did know really. <laughs> yeah. what, what did people uh, have before uh, potatoes were important into Finland? Uh, any grains? I don't know porridge. What was the substitute for potatoes? I don't really know because I, I was very young at that time, so uh, I don't really remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't know. <laughs> right. But, uh, okay. We add yes. a bit of salt. Salt, okay, yes. Sorry, I was a bit ahead of the recipe. Uh, I should just let you, you know, be in charge of uh, what to <laughs> no, add. When. No, no, yes. it's, it's fine. Right, okay, good. Look, while you're doing this, uh, while the magic is uh, happening, uh, let, let's maybe go back and have a, a few more slides about the Finnish Arbitration Institute. You said that the, the portion of international cases is growing um, from year to year. I have a, a chart with the um, nationality of the parties and it seems that the Finns, the Finnish companies and perhaps individuals still uh, uh, represent a dominant part of uh, the claimants and respondents. And that's a serious uh, element of domestic cases, but also uh, there are parties from um, other countries. What, what do you do in order to improve um, the ratio of international parties in, in the Finnish uh, Arbitration Institute? Is there any program or something? Well, I, I, I think that the uh, program is, 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 is pretty obvious. I think that uh, we're trying to, I mean, uh, arbitration is of course, uh, I mean, the Institute has sort of different kinds of clients and dif different kinds of customers and there are kind of different kinds of markets. So, so if we think about what we do in Finland, for example, I mean, I think we need to inform the companies about uh, effective ways of dispute resolution. I mean, the Finnish, uh, well, let's say the biggest uh, dispute resolution groups obviously know the institute, and, and, and we are the leading institute in Finland. So for us, it's 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 uh, that is not the difficulty, but to to maybe uh, inform the companies more effectively, that is something that we try to to, to work on. And then, uh, if we think about the international market, then it's it's probably more about uh, reaching out to 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 the arbitration lawyers and and, and get the get the. Uh, contact to the market through through them and then uh, that means of course being very active in 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 uh, uh, meeting people uh, active in, in in the seminar scene and 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 we of course have one important uh, event in Finland the the Helsinki International Arbitration Day which is organized biannually next time uh, next spring uh, in in June uh, so I hope that many many people will Will be able to join that is of course one important part of our our uh, reaching out to to the international market and and of course uh just uh trying to 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 meet many people and uh tell many people about our operation and our institute uh, okay good looking at the um at this pie statistical pie i see that uh, around a half of the disputes actually relate to to shareholders disputes and corporate disputes and directors liabilities and directors employment etc so it's like company disputes why is that so is uh, is the arbitration clause included in some sort of a model charter company charter in finland so i don't know there's some some tradition to bring corporate disputes to arbitration in finland do you know well, I believe it's it's more a question of, of, of tradition. I would say. I mean, of course, if you if you look at our statistics, it's it's uh, we're not the biggest institute in the world, at least not yet. So uh, so if we have sixty seven cases like we had last year, or 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 even a bit more, the the differences uh, from year from one year to another are are actually uh, quite significant. And and I would say that uh, even if you look at our our statistics it's it's uh, not that hugely dominated by by any surprising group of, 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 of cases or type of cases so so I think that it's just that these kind of disputes are such that people are not uh, used to, to dealing with 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 the disputes in in, in state courts and, and and arbitration in Finland has a strong uh, uh, 
position in, in, in that market. So, so I think that would be the explanation for, for, for the big, big share. Okay. okay. Um, uh, the next, the next slide, uh, the ratio of using the regular arbitration rules. I mean, it seems that it's quite seventy-two percent of cases are actually administered under the arbitration rules. But this ten percent of um, expedited rules. What kind of cases are those? And um, do do you? Well, uh, yeah. Well, I think uh, the. Uh, Generally, uh, we have had uh, quite a low percentage of expedited uh, uh, rules uh, at the Institute, uh, which has probably been also due to the fact that our regular uh, uh, procedure is, is quite fast. So, so uh, I think that our regular uh, uh, procedure is as fast as, as, as the expedited procedure in some other other uh, important uh, players in the market, uh, but uh, uh, but uh, I think that uh, one issue has also been that at the uh, expedited uh, in expedited arbitration, the award should be given in three months uh, after uh, transmission of the case file to the tribunal, and, and and that's quite fast. So it has maybe had an effect on on on. Uh, steering the uh, only the smaller and the smallest cases to, to expedited arbitration. But now uh, with the new uh, 2020 rules uh, that came into, for, uh, into force in the, in the beginning of the year, uh, we, are, uh, we have developed a, a, a bit of a flexible system in, in, in allowing the parties to agree on, on moving the uh, arbitrations that, that that have been agreed to to uh, to follow the regular rules uh, to uh, to be under the expedited rules. I mean, if both of the parties agree, uh, they obviously can change to expedited arbitration, and and this has actually happened uh, uh, at times, uh, especially with cases with lower uh, uh, or smaller interests. Uh, it would, of course, make sense because the expedited uh, procedure is not only faster but also cheaper. So, uh, so I think that they will that the share of expedited arbitrations will actually be even bigger uh, in the in the in the future. Right, especially now when people get to appreciate efficiency and speed of the pr procedure, and if uh, the cases are very simple, sales of goods, etc. So perhaps the expedited rules. Um, um, the way to go. Okay, back to you, back to the kitchen. Uh, what do you have in front of you? So I think that the, the reindeer is, is uh, there and the uh, mashed potatoes are, are, are done. So uh, the next step that uh, we would need to follow uh, would be the lingonberries, right? Right. And so the, the uh, lingonberries are the wild berries from a local forest or? Exactly. Yes. Uh, they, are, they look a bit like uh, cranberries mm. uh, and, and, and also taste a bit like uh, cranberries. And, and, and I think that this is also a good choice for, uh, I mean, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like a trinity. I mean, they go together, uh, the salted reindeer, mashed potatoes and, and, and lingonberries. I mean, you cannot uh, eat one or two without the, the third. So, so, so it's, it's, there's no choice there, but still I think it's, it's, it's good to point out that uh, I think that one key element in Finnish food is actually the, the wild food and the, and the wild berries and, and mushrooms that, that, that people can, as you explained, uh, go to the forest and find themselves even. And, and, and that is, of course, they are very, very tasty. I mean, for example, Finnish forest blueberries have nothing to do with actually the, the garden blueberries that you, you find all over the world. It's, it's completely a different product. And and uh, and these are very simple ingredients with very good taste and also ethically very sustainable uh, in in terms of food. So, for example, my morning routine is that I, I always make myself a sm uh, smoothie with uh, with yogurt and blueberries, and, and and I always feel very good about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so very well, very, very good. So, uh, um, what's the next step? What do we do? Oh, so this is also very simple, uh, quite surprisingly. 
but but we have the uh, the beautiful lingonberries and then we uh, add a bit of sugar. Uh, now you have to watch that you won't add salt to the lingonberries because it would not be the same. But we just add a bit of sugar, uh, and uh, then we just according to one's taste. I mean, it shouldn't be too sweet. It's not a jam. It's just mashed lingonberries with the uh, with the reindeer, so it should be a bit sour. So. Uh, then you just, I mean, the, the berries were frozen, uh, and then you just uh, mash them a bit uh, with the spoon uh, to, 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 to make it a bit of a, well, what would you say, a mash uh, thing and, and, and get the juices uh, going and, uh, and, and mix the sugar with the, with the berries a bit. But Good, so, so you release the juice and make it ferment with sugar, a little bit with sugar, I guess. Yes. And um, yeah, so it's uh, it's not like a, a, a jam. It's not a, um, a homogeneous uh, type of substance, but you still have pills there. You have the um, the soft part of the berries and the juice and sugar and makes it like a very fresh, sour yeah. type of jam. Okay. Exactly. So, and if and people do not, yeah. and if people are not lucky enough um, to um, to have uh, lingonberries around the houses, would they be able to use any substitute you know, for that? Well, I mean, cranberries would be would be excellent. I mean, uh, and I think that they are available uh, quite well uh, all Good. around the world. So, but all right, any 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 berry which is a bit sour, it would, okay. it Good. maybe in black currant or something if you cannot find cranberries. Yes, yes. So I guess you can really. Uh, uh, be creative here and try different components, different ingredients, and mix yeah, them with can. the original foods. Okay, so what's next? So uh, I think that uh, the uh, the Lincoln berries look quite nice. I mean, can you can you see them? Yes. Maybe, yeah. Maybe a bit. It's it's a bit difficult because if I really pour them, I might have an accident here. <laughs> right. So uh, maybe maybe you see a bit. They look quite nice. So uh, the next thing would actually be just to collect uh, everything on the plate. Would you be ready for that? Absolutely. Wonderful. Yes, my my so, mouth is watering. Seeing what so uh, we, uh, what's the we magic. Take a plate. <laughs> yeah. And then we uh, take the mashed potatoes. They were just a bit on the stove to keep them warm. So we start with the mashed potatoes. Uh, we add them on the plate, uh, preferably uh, in the middle maybe so and then we make a hole in the middle of the mashed potatoes this is the very traditional approach okay so it's uh one more lake to that one hundred and eighty thousand lakes already existing exactly exactly right. and then uh then we take the reindeer uh let's do it like this we open it now it looks a bit fringe but it's okay and we uh we uh at the, uh, no, it looks actually quite good. It's 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 better than I thought it would be. It looks uh, very good. Well, you don't see anything yet, do you? <laughs> uh, and uh, you're just being polite. And then we uh, we add uh, add the uh, reindeer in the middle. Uh, and this dish would go for there's probably a portion enough for even two people, right? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Would it be a, a traditional thing in Finland to eat from the same plate, or you guys, you know, not try not to share food? You have like individual plates normally. What's the like traditional way of eating? Well, I would say the traditional way is to have individual plates. Individual plates. Okay. Yeah. So. And then we add the uh, Lincoln berries to the to the uh, final product, and this would more or less be uh, more or less be it then. Uh, so I'll, I'll try and show it to the to the camera. So. Uh, oh, this is wonderful. How does it look, from uh, It looks it looks awesome, and I wish I could try it. So, Anto, please uh, take a photo of this because uh, at the end of this first season, we are planning to collect all the recipes and and pictures of uh, professionally cooked dishes, as well as pictures of uh, dishes prepared by our viewers and publish uh, 
an arbitration cookbook. So the Arbitration Kitchen Book Season 1, we hope to have it out already in November, December this year. Um, before before we finish, I have, um, and I know we are, we are facing very unusual times, and um, we thought to also to have this program for a good purpose and just bring people's attention and awareness uh, of various non-for-profit organizations which support doctors which support hospitals across the world fighting with the disease i'm sure there are plenty of local establishments which raise money for for, for good purpose but um just uh, to be uh, or, uh, more international we decided uh, to support the uh, world health organization special fund uh, designed for this covid 19 response uh, response fund to to raise money for uh, to support doctors and hospitals across the world. So if you wish to donate a penny, if you wish to donate a couple of cents, maybe a euro, a dollar, a ruble, a yen, etc., whatever currency you prefer, you can just simply visit the webpage and help um, help them to fight the disease. Uh, with this, I would like to uh, thank you, Santo, very much for making yourself available, tell, telling us about your institute, your, your your life in general about Finland was very entertaining. And uh, thank you very much for joining this episode. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for everybody for, for listening. And uh, of course, I, I hope that uh, many of you uh, will uh, try uh, the reindeer, uh, try Finland and even try the FAA, FAI at some point. So uh, thank you very much uh, for invitation. And it's been, uh, it's been great uh, fun doing this. Thank you very much. And uh, we will see you. Um, I, th I think the next episode will be either this Thursday or next Monday, but do you please follow us on Facebook or YouTube or other social networks where we'll see um, who the next guest is. Uh, and that was me, Raman Zikov, with this episode of the one and only Arbitration Kitchen uh, with Santo Turunin, the Secretary General of the Finnish Arbitration Institute, a good cook, a good person, and a great professional. Thank you very much, Santo, and have a great evening. Goodbye. Thank you. You too. Bye.